Hello, Bible readers. Psalm 38 was so very clear about a connection between sin and suffering, but also opened a door to questions. Like, if I suffer, I must deserve it. Maybe? Probably? But must my sins result in suffering? Please, pretty please, may the relationship we have, God, mean more than whatever machine pushes you to make sins always result in suffering? Well, if Psalm 38 opens a door to such questions, Psalm 39 walks through that door. In just 13 verses, hope and despair are simultaneously lifted up to God. As my Brueggemann Bellinger commentary says, Psalm 39 is able to portray life the way it really is. Terrifyingly short, and awesomely wonderful. And it represents the tension involved in our response to life. That is both hopeful awe and nearly unspeakable despair. Psalm 39 is a powerful little psalm that begins and ends unusually as compared to other psalms. Instead of starting with an address to God or a lament or other ways that we've maybe become familiar with if you're on this post, it starts with a self-quotation. I said, I will guard my ways that I may not sin with my tongue. In other words, I said to myself that I wouldn't say anything. But <laughs> the need to speak overcomes the desire to remain silent. I've been there before, if you, but you have too. The psalmist just can't keep it in. What is it that they can't keep in? Well, verses 4 to 6, a reflection on the transience of life, how fleeting life is. We're here, we're gone. It's just like that. Surely everyone stands as a mere breath, the psalmist says. The Hebrew words here make the poetry even more powerful. It's like the words are being stacked on each other till we're overwhelmed with a feeling that comes from the way the words sound actually. Life is fleeting, hadel. A lifetime is nothing, heldi. A mere breath, hebel. We do this in English too, when we're writing poetry or writing prose. We call it alliteration, right? That's preposterous, presumptuous, pathetic. Like saying something like that, using that P sound to get at what we mean. We're not just using those words for the for what they mean, we're using those words because of how they sound, right? Well, in Hebrew, they do that too. And they do that a lot with the here, anyway. Ha-del, hel-di, hebel, to say that life is fleeting. They almost sound exasperated, right? Verse 7 is the hinge of this psalm. And now, O Lord, like having... Just explain my exasperation. And now, O oh Lord, we know by now that it's very significant to notice when the psalmist addresses God. And here it is in verse 7. And now, O oh Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Deliver me from my transgressions. And then the psalmist tries for silence again much like the beginning of the psalm. I don't open my mouth, for it is you who have done it. Hmm. The it the psalmist speaks of here is certainly the hurt, the suffering that the psalmist is experiencing, is lamenting. Verse 10 says more about that, and most biblical scholars think verse 10 is likely referring to an illness. That's the, the best meaning they can glean from this. Remove your stroke from me. I'm worn down by the blows of your hand. And then verse 11 ends a lot like verse 5 did. Surely everyone is a mere breath. I don't usually go line by line like this, do I, in these posts? But that's because most psalms don't pack so much into each verse like Psalm 39 does. There's four sections. The I don't want to say anything, but I got to say something section. The life is fleeting, hatel, heldi, hebel section that admits their hope in the Lord. And then there's this third section that ascribes the psalmist's suffering to God. And finally, there is a fourth and final section that names God both, and this is super interesting, 
both as the real trouble for the psalmist and their only hope. At the same time, Brueggemann calls it both a poignant and weary end, the hope for a, a smile before I am no more. Mm. Hear my prayer, O God, and turn your gaze from me. To hold both those ideas in one relationship, in one religion, in one psalm is incredible. I want to say nothing, but have to say something to you, O God. Answer me and look away. I am so desperate and yet so hopeful because my hope is in you. These are the ambiguous feelings of a human life. And we all know what the psalmist is getting at because we all know that there are these bittersweet moments of life, bittersweet chapters of life. We know how it can feel during an illness or a crisis. We know that life is not a series of clear actions resulting in obvious consequences or hope always resulting in fulfillment of that hope. Life is messy and it's full of questions, all of which, and this is the best part of the prayer that is Psalm 39, all of which can be and should be brought to the feet of God. I am one with my God. My God is with us, all of us at all times and in all places.